Well, we've come to the final part of my Michael Manley interview. Thank you so much for joining me and thanks for the comments. In this seventh part, Michael Manley continues speaking about politics. The five flights a day comment. Communism. You'll hear his wife, Glyn Manley, and you'll hear Marjorie Wiley make their comments. He's clearly very hurt that the country was plunged into violence in 1980. And then you can make up your mind whether you think he feared death. But how do you think he wanted to be remembered? Listen. Do you think about Jamaica being plunged into violence and in, the 90, in 1980? Who engineered all of this? You know, everybody knows who started it. Everybody knows who went around with the secret meetings all over Jamaica saying communism is coming. You know, I have heard of people in Miami to this day who will tell you they know there were 3,000 Cuban troops up in the Blue Mountains waiting to do what? All lies. And uh, it was done as a very clever way of, of undermining a spirit that was being born in Jamaica in which ordinary people, so-called masses people, were feeling an opportunity. And there was a fear, I think, that that could create a political force that was unbeatable. And it had its problems. Of course, the middle class were worried and upset, and that was not intended, but a sad consequence of what was going on. And so this thing happened to start the violence. And of course, inevitably, there were PNP elements that responded, and by the time you were finished, both were at it, hammer and tongs and... So you're not saying the PNP sat down and took it? Of course not. I, I lie. I do not lie about anything. And the fact is that in the end, there were elements in the PNP who were tough enough and strong enough to give as good as they were getting. But what's the price we paid? that you started a tradition of warfare, of violence, of communities to whom that became natural, and in the end on both sides, but it never needed to have happened. And we have paid, I feel we are paying a price to this day. It is perfectly true that since 1980 it stopped when I really said to the PNP, no revenge. We are now the opposition. This is our chance to start it and we're not going to, and we didn't. The record is there and clear, but meantime, Things had been done to, to, to urban communities from which they have not fully recovered. Irreparable damage, although, you're saying. Although it is now more, you know, centered on cocaine and hard drug peddling and things of that sort, we're still paying the price for it. Well, just before we leave politics, a minute or so I'd like you to comment on a particular quotation of yours that many people remember five flights a day. Any regrets having said that? I have to ask you. <laughs> That's a good one, you know. I tell you. <laughs> Five if, I, today. if there was one I could take back, <laughs> that would have been one that I would take back. Because, you know, no matter what you mean, two things, that and the hilltop, the mountain top. <laughs> you see, <laughs> it was, well, I tell you, me was young and innocent. <laughs> <laughs> so you take you those know, back. You know, by the mountain top, I didn't mean that you're going to get there by the same means. I mean, we have our way, and you have your way, but I hope our people will both meet at some point of their hopes and aspirations. But of course, immediately, ha, 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 they won't get there the same way as Fidel. But, you know, I paid the price for it. Five flights, I tell you. No, wait now. Take time. To me, what I was trying to say was that there is a group of people who want to get rich without paying their dues, without honesty, without hard work, etc., etc. You must remember that there had been tremendous rip-offs in real estate deals in Jamaica at the time. And what I was saying is, and my words are there forever, we are proud of anybody who makes it by hard work and honesty and becomes rich if they like doing that. But we don't want a country in which that can continue to happen then. What I meant to imply was, in some countries, people get locked up in the country whether they like it or not. Jamaica's free. But my feeling is if all you want is to cut corner and rob people and get rich by skullduggery. I don't want it to happen in Jamaica, but you're not locked in. There are five flights a day to Miami. That's what I really meant. And the truth is, is what I still mean. But nobody took it that way. <laughs> well, we've cleared no, the air. That's why I wish it had never been said. <laughs> yes, I know, we've cleared the air with that. No, I'm going to get a little personal and ask Mrs. Manley, what kind of husband is Michael Manley? 
Ah, he's great. He's really terrific. He's the most supportive person, male or female, that I know. Um, always generous with his time, his advice, his counsel, his love, his caring. Um, just generally warm. We've, we've developed a great, great happiness together, um, particularly up at our spot, which is Nyumbani. And um, between us, we've got a lovely family atmosphere. He's now had time to reconnect with his um, children, which his profession never allowed before. And um, I guess maybe you have to be our age to really and truly benefit from experience and the commitment that we have to a peaceful, quiet, close family life. It's really very special. He's great. Marjorie, you had something to ask of Mr. Um, I think I, um, this is the right time. Yes, I am learning a script now. It's about the life of Alberta Hunter, and there's a line that she says, it takes a lot of age to be smart enough to live. Yeah. Can you relate to that? Oh, that's profound. Who said that? That's Alberta that's Hunter. She's a blues singer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's profound. And you know, interesting, you see, the, w w what is marvelous is that um, Glyn now has a life that is enormously creative with this work she does with the university, trying to raise funds from the private sector for university projects, which she does with enormous energy and now mounting success. So that's exciting to be involved supporting her in that. And also, you know, there's a secret I should let you into. She is the best editor of my writing in the world. Uh -huh. Everything I write, she edits it. I didn't She's know a that. Fine, tough editor, and because <laughs> she, unlike many other people, is not afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I am intense about the things I'm committed to and believe in. And if people say things that I forgive me, but really think are patently nonsense, I don't just gently smile and say, "Ha ha." I tend to come back with what I think and point out why I think that is absolute nonsense. If you if you like, maybe I don't altogether, you know, this is so for fools glad, and I don't mean <laughs> that. But, you know, sometimes people talk so carelessly mm. about things, and I resent it. And, you know, I will speak out with intensity. <laughs> and rumor has it that you're in retirement, but rumor also has it that you're doing so much work now that you really need to retire 20 years from now. <laughs> what are you well, actually I hope doing? I'm going to get the chance to retire 20 years from now. What do you do now? Not, oh, what am I not doing now? Let me think, what am I doing? I'm the consultant who is trying to establish employee share ownership throughout Jamaica, which is an old passion of mine. I had a very exciting time really being the person who put together the Association of Caribbean States the first time and then its first economic summit. I love doing that. Um, I love it when, you know, these days universities get me to go like for a week and take classes and teach as well as lecture under the public and the private. Like, you know, I had a marvelous time the other day. I was asked by a group of baseball players at Illinois Wesleyan University to explain cricket. Yes. <laughs> and they thought I was going to do a lecture, and I said, no, put me in the gym with a blackboard. And I happened to know baseball almost as well as I know cricket. And I was able to take them through the difference in the dynamics of the games, and at the end of it, they're going to form a cricket club. <laughs> well, more power to them. More power to them. So you're doing a lot and of touring and stuff, traveling you know, and which lecturing. I enjoy immensely. How does Michael Manley relax? With Glenn up at Yumbani with Glenn at Yumbani. That we, you know, we both love gardening. And we've, I think we've created an almost magical garden. We have a, a quite a big little art collection up there, because <laughs> we both love art. And you know, the <laughs> Jamaican painting of Midway now sort of three high <laughs> on the walls. So every time we go to an exhibition, we just fall in love with something, and we buy it. And so you're, you should sit there with all the paintings. And then there's the music, and I have a really cutting-edge stereo set, you know. I've always heard of that. <laughs> I've always heard of that. Yeah, the music and the garden and the painting, and, you know, it's just marvelous. Now, three questions are coming, and I just want you to answer them as briefly as you can. Do you have any single fear? And if so, what is it? Oh, fear. 
Well, I suppose like all people, you know, one's afraid of violence. You fight the fear of violence in yourself. Though, you know, as a, as a political and union person, you have to learn to deal with that and never run away from it. Um, I would not say that I look forward to death. <laughs> I may put it as bluntly as I can. And um, these days, I don't know what else, really. Do you have any regrets? Oh, yeah. Everybody has regrets. Any one regret you'd like to share? I, well, you know, from one point of view, I wish I had... Um, I wish I had had a more complete understanding of certain aspects of economic development. I'm always in trouble because all Jamaican politicians have made crashing errors in economic management. I seem to be the only one that ever admits it. And I admit it freely because it is true. I made mistakes that were born of not being aware of how rapidly economic problems were changing in the world. And I made mistakes. But I think they were honest mistakes, they weren't willful mistakes. But I watch everybody else making crashing <laughs> errors and people judging them as masters of this because they say they are masters of it. And when I look at their efforts at economic management, I have to laugh. What are your but hopes? But nobody seems to say so. <laughs> <laughs> what are your hopes now? Is there, is there one single hope that you'd like to share with us, either for yourself or this nation? Well, for myself, really it is family. You know that all the kids are doing well right now and I'd love them all to become happy, happy, engaged, creative people. I don't want any of them to get into politics, but I'd never stand in their way if they wanted to. But I wouldn't like that for them. But to be happy and creative and all that, not successful, creative, that I think would be just quite wonderful. And it's happening. For Jamaica, that Jamaica could find a way to finally achieve the balance between successful economic development and social justice and transformation. All the time we have either had marginal success with the economy, some success with social development, some success with social transformation. But so far, we have not really put the two together at the same time. The day we do that, you know, when you think of what a vastly talented country this is, hugely talented, in the arts, in literature, in sport, in profession, some of its business people are brilliant, a brilliant trade union movement. We ought to be doing better in the totality of social development. Uh, I hope that will come. Yes, and my penultimate is, um, how do you feel about the NDM in a, in a sentence? Is oh. it a good thing that we have a third party now? I, I, I don't think, how would I put it? You know, I, because I am a Democrat, I'm totally undisturbed by the fact there's an NDM. If, they, if people feel there's need for a third party, to say that I'm cool isn't even to begin to <laughs> how I feel. You know, that's, that's democracy. Good, I would think that it could have a good effect in this reason, for this reason, that I think that political systems need something that almost provokes renewal, provokes looking at yourself again. And if the fact that the NDM is there can force the older parties and itself as a new party to bring fresh thinking to political process, that is pure gain. Mr. Mann, it's been an absolute pleasure. The final question is, how would you like to be remembered when all of this is gone? Well, I can only say what, what flashes into my mind, sure. in, in so far as one could. I think I would like to be remembered as somebody who cared enough to try. Well, that was the seventh and final part of my interview with Michael Manley. This was recorded 28 years ago. This final segment, I'm quite certain, will generate a lot of heat and discussion in political circles and outside of the political circles, particularly his comments on the events of 1980, the violence, the political violence that the country was plunged into, JLP and PNP going at it. You also heard him being um, complimented as a husband by his wife. And among other things, he shared with you how he would like to be remembered. Simply put, someone who cared enough to try. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me. Again, I want to thank 
Mrs. Glyn Manley, the Gleaner Company, Sarah Manley, and Granville Valentine of the NWU for providing photographs. And thanks to Dadrian Hosang of Creative Sounds for helping me put this together. Well, there are many more interviews like this that I did, so perhaps I'll have more coming at you. This is Faye Ellington. Walk good, tell him other one how to do. <laughs>